G'day everyone, I'm Patrick. And I'm Brad, and we did our project on the 3D characterization of proteins using NMR. We're very sorry that we couldn't make it this afternoon. Hope you enjoy our video, let's get into it. Proteins are a form of our everyday lives. These structures are made up of repeating amino acids, a peptide bond. This connects the amino group and a carboxyl group of neighbouring amino acids, whilst extracting water as a byproduct in the process. The side chains of these proteins are essential in determining the 3D structure of the protein, as it can establish that it is occurring between neighbouring molecules. Tertiary proteins relate to hydrogen bonding between the R groups of the amino acids. Evidently, this leads to bonding between the backbones of the proteins, which results in our 3D structures. As can be seen in the slideshow presentation, the photo shows a protein with an alpha helix and a beta sheet, which is essential in determining the shape. The hydrogen isotope with high abundance in proteins possesses a spin equal to a half, therefore attaining a magnetic moment and making it NMR active. This proton can spin in two orientations when an external magnetic field is applied, one aligned with the magnetic field at lower energy and one opposed to the magnetic field at higher energy. An NMR signal is generated by applying the correct pulse of electromagnetic radiation which excites and flips the hydrogen at a lower energy spin orientation to a higher energy spin orientation, achieving resonance which results in an NMR signal. The NMR spectrum is obtained by altering the magnetic field at a constant frequency of electromagnetic radiation. The chemical surroundings can be examined due to a small local magnetic field which is opposed to the external magnetic field being created due to the flow of electrons around the magnetic hydrogen nucleus. The electron density surrounding the nucleus gives rise to the idea of shielding the nucleus from the magnetic field, therefore causing different environments to resonate at different strengths and frequencies. This is known as chemical shifts, which indicate the difference in parts per million between the resonant frequency of the observed proton and that of tetramethylsilene. Therefore, proton NMR is useful in determining the number of hydrogens in a protein as well as the functional groups surrounding the nuclei. Proton NMR can't fully identify the protein structure and its 3D makeup. However, as mentioned earlier, isotopes carbon-13 and nitrogen-15 are also NMR active. An amino acid contains these atoms, thus the whole molecule can be studied. The bond between the hydrogen and the nitrogen is essential in determining the makeup of a protein. This bond can be observed by an NMR technique named HNHSQC, which is heteronuclear single quantum correlation. This correlates to a spectrum quite similar to proton NMR. On the vertical axes is nitrogen in parts per million and proton in parts per million on the horizontal axes. Each dot on this spectrum relates the nitrogen and the hydrogen together. However, Another dimension can be brought in in 3D, which also brings the carbon isotope. Bringing in another dimension leads carbon in, which is triple resonance heteronuclear NMR spectrum. Now, one dot will correlate to the coupling between a hydrogen, nitrogen and carbon in one of the residues. This is essential when determining how many amino acid groups are present in the protein. These dots are now on an X, Y and Z axis with hydrogen, nitrogen and carbon on each axis. Essentially in the end one dot correlates to one amino acid group. The nuclear overhauser effect arises from dipole-dipole relaxation between two spin active nuclei. As nuclei that are adjacent to each other in space will undergo cross relaxation of spin polarization which allows the study of spatial distance between homonuclear atoms within a protein. When a nucleus is excited through magnetization, relaxation between the excited nuclei and its neighbouring nuclei, which is at equilibrium, occurs. The intensity of the nucleus which was at equilibrium then increases. The efficiency of this re relaxation is dependent on the spatial distances between the nuclei and can only be studied if they are within 5 astroms apart. Therefore, it can be said that the nuclear overhauser effect depends on the change in intensity of one nuclei's resonance when the intensity of its neighbouring nuclei's resonance is altered, meaning the smaller distance between nuclei, the larger change in intensity. From this, the folding behaviours within a protein can be determined. The nosy spectrum contains a diagonal which corresponds to the one-dimensional peaks that would be seen in a regular proton spectrum of the molecule in question. 
However, it's the peaks that occur off the di diagonal known as cross peaks, which provide information about the spatial distance between nuclei, which can be seen here. The larger the spots in the spectrum, the closer in space they are. In conclusion, a protein can be determined using NMR, with the heteronuclear effect determining how many amino acids are present, and the nosy spectrum determining where proteins are in space, 3D makeup can be determined. However, due to complexities of a protein, the exact protein can be challenging to identify only using NMR techniques.